Welcome to Visual Building Tutorial 2, Part 1. First we're going to create a new project. And right click on the 2D view, click on Properties, and you'll see that we can now set the scale. In this case we're going to set the scale to 1 to 100. Click OK. We're now going to check the grid line is correct. We are going to use a grid of 50. All our default measurements are going to be in meters. And we're now going to place some guidelines. I've preset my guidelines to be hash blue to stand out. This is achieved by right clicking on the guideline tool and then in the properties for the guideline set the color and line style as you wish. Right, I'll just zoom in here so that you can see what I'm actually going to do with the guidelines. First, I'm going to place a horizontal guideline and now a vertical guideline. This, these two guidelines are going to be my datum points. And I'm now going to select a guideline I'm now going to set a parallel guideline with an offset. This is to represent the width of my house, which is 12.8 meters. And now to put the, the height and our height of or the depth of the house is 10.08 meters. Now to use the offset tool again to set the width of the back portion of the house and then the depth of the back portion of the house. So there's my guidelines representing the outline of my first floor. Just zoom in. I'm now going to use the wall tool to snap my external wall to the guidelines that I've actually just placed. And using the external wall type with the placement method between two points. My first click snaps the guideline, but before I place my second click, I use the Control W key to, to change the snap edge of the wall. These are external dimensions, so I want to actually ensure it's the external edge of the wall that snaps the guideline. Notice the automatic labeling of room one. This is a good indication that we have got uh, good wall connections. Let's just double click on the wall so that we can see why we have a hatch. That's defined in this dialog here, and we could have actually made this a grey fill. Um, we could also make this as a cavity wall as well. To load the cavity wall, we can go into some templates which are prepared and load a cavity, and we could actually replace the hatch with a cavity wall, such as that's what the cavity wall looks like. Um, we can also create our own cavity wall designs, but uh, we'll cover that in another tutorial. For now, I'll just use the template. And what I can do is save this cavity wall as default so that all the use of this wall type will use a cavity wall of that type. So just do Control Z to get rid of my walls and let's just redraw the walls using the same method using Control w to change the snapping edge of the wall and you'll say, see this time that I've, whoops, just Control z that and you'll just, that's a error, right, let's just snap my new cavity wall wall to the guidelines.
Right, I'm now just going to place some guidelines for my internal walls. Remember, using guidelines is not essential. You, you can just draw the walls and use similar wall placement tools to the guideline tools. I prefer guidelines because I work faster and get more precise results from them. Right, with my internal wall guidelines placed, I now select an internal wall. In this case, we'll use the partition wall type. I believe this has got a default setting of 10 centimeter thick. As I place each internal wall snap into the guideline, notice that new room names are being created. Again, this is a good indication that you've got good wall connections. One of the first problems that new users face is actually making good wall connections. Bad wall connections can give you problems later on in your project, especially when you're creating a roof. I've made a mistake here because room 5 and room 1 should be a single room. I can't just delete that uh, middle wall because that same wall is dividing room 6 and 7. So I must use the wall editing tools here just to pull back that wall from the outside wall to the centre wall. Right, I'll just switch off the guidelines to get a cleaner view of what we've got. Um, let's create a 3D view. Notice we've only had the 2D view here. Clicking on the 3D view button will create a new 3D view. And everything we've created in the 2D is also now viewable in the 3D. Let's just view both 2D and 3D view together. And zoom in. My environment block is too big here. So what I'm going to do is just select it and change the default size from 50 meters to 20. 20 width and 20 depth. Hit OK. And now if I zoom in, I've got a uh, better view. And while I'm at it, I want to change the texture of my block. I've got a uh, a better green than the default green. That's going to be all we're going to do in step one of tutorial two.